Okay, good evening and welcome to the BOHS District 6 meeting of May 4th, 2015. And uh, we will start as normal uh, with clerk's report. And the agenda says approval of the minutes of April 6th and April 20th. Uh, April 6th we did approve at the April 20th meeting. Uh, so those are all set. And the April 20th uh, minutes, uh, I don't know if everybody got it. They were around late this afternoon. Some of us had seen them beforehand. Um, did uh, did everybody get to get to at least glance at them? Yes. Mike and uh, yeah. Russ. You can, I, have a, I have a copy right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Out, so you Pat, did you get a... Yes. Okay. There, uh, normally we will try to get them uh, available a little bit earlier. So, uh, okay, that being the case, then we have the April 20th minutes for consideration. Is there a motion? I move we approve the April 20th minutes as printed. Is there a second? Second. Yes, okay. Any additions, corrections, or deletions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? No, I'm staying. I was absent. Ricky and I believe Lori wasn't here. Either. Okay. Um, are there any communications? Okay, I guess not. Is there anything else for the clerk's report? If not, we'll move on to recognition of groups and individual visitors, of which we have none. So we will move forward. And we will move to item four, which is consent agenda. Is there a motion? I move we enter consent agenda. Ricky and second. Second by Ruth. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Or abstentions? Seeing none. And we're in the consent agenda. And we start with finance. Finance committee has not met since the April twentieth meeting. I'm <laughs> really happy about that, Ruth. <laughs> it's rare that we don't meet between board meetings. Right. Just didn't the calendar didn't work that way this time? No, the we, calendar yeah, doesn't like you cooperate. Yeah. yeah. We didn't. Uh, well, we do have a meeting uh, this Thursday, April, May seventh, uh, at eight o'clock in the James Kane Conference Room. Okay, so we have no warrants to review and approve. Uh, how about the uh, WSESU finance? Yeah, we met on um, April 29th, <clears throat> and we approved uh, various warrants. Um, we looked at the year-to-date. Frank presented a year-to-date on, on spending and revenues, and we're, we're, we're pretty much on track there. Um, talked about... Uh, uh, Dental insurance um, bids that were going out. Um, talk some about the, the um, savings initiative with the, the photovoltaic, and a little bit on um, some clean energy development fund with the Academy School getting a seventy-five thousand dollars grant. And our next meeting is the thirteenth of May at five o'clock. The fifteenth, did you say? 13th. Oh, okay. On um, 13th. Um, yeah. We'll be looking at uh, superintendent re um, evaluation and review and contract. Uh, and then, what is this? Reviewing travel policy re require, uh, and uh, energy savings initiatives and funding opportunities is what the practice will be. That's a lot. It is. We're, we're a busy committee. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Russ. You bet. Planning and policy. Uh, attempted to meet this uh, evening, but we were once again unable to achieve a quorum. Uh, it was just Ricky and I here. So uh, I think perhaps we should look at the makeup of the committee and adjust for uh, availability. Uh, the other members are Lori and four. Four. Yes. 
So we need three for a quorum. Okay. Yes, because we do want to keep the keep moving along. Um, the uh, dress code is still under discussion with administrators and students and so forth. It is, and what we're waiting for now is to get a solid consensus from the committee. Because I think we're just about ready to move forward with it, but we need yes. to actually be able to take action. Okay. Perhaps we need to have a uh, reminder notice before the meeting in addition to uh, agenda going out, I suppose. It's always, it's always on the top of the agenda, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so I'll say, you know, there's always that, well, is the notice too early or too late? You know, if it's too early, then people, you know, may mark it down, but then forget to follow up. Or if it's too late, then they don't have time to schedule it. But uh, we just want to make sure we can get a uh, quorum on a regular basis. Will we be meeting on the 18th? Yes, we'll be meeting. I mean, the, the policy committee, we Yes. Yes, we'll be meeting before the next. We'll be attempting okay. to meet again before the next regular board meeting. So will it be a? a, a yeah, we'll just do, do a little two half hours. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Ian. Uh, teacher curriculum committee. Um, we met earlier this evening, and we talked over um, one percent stuff, and we'll have for the eighteenth meeting, hopefully, the first batch of one percent to be approved from the faculty um, and the administration is hoping that the faculty uses their one percent time to uh, work on some proficiency based, proficiency based learning opportunities learning expectations and th those things to move f f the school further along in that process so we got a little mini board education or more education related to proficiency based learning and personal learning plans and learning expectations tonight, which was, I think, was good for everybody that was here, even if you weren't on TCC. And um, hopefully, when the in two weeks when we start getting one percent in, a lot of the teachers are taking that opportunity to do the work that they can do to move themselves in that direction as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ricky. Bams committee. BAMS committee has not met, but we will be meeting on Monday the 18th in the morning at 7.45 in the BAMS conference room. So. Uh, 5.18, okay. WRCC has not met since our last board meeting. Okay. Is there anything else for consent agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve consent agenda? So moved. <coughs> Second. Second. Okay, Ricky and Ruth. All in favor? Aye. Opposed or abstentions? <coughs> None. It is unanimously approved. And we move on to administrative reports. Uh, let's go north to south this time, just for the heck of it. How about the Career Center? All right, thanks, Wade. So last week, uh, Future Business Leaders of America sponsored a March of Dimes awareness fundraiser that included the entire Career Center staff and the third block students of time. Staff and students walked around the campus and ended in the Career Center tick building for raffles and prizes and they raised $100 for the March of Dimes which was a pretty nice turnout. So it was a nice walking event <coughs> for the staff and students to be involved with. And it was a nice day as well. Uh, Skills USA, we do have a student this year that will be attending the national competition in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, <coughs> his name is Leon Ogden, and he will be competing in architectural drafting and design uh, for the state of Vermont in that category. So we wish him the best and the luck in the, that competition. And Amy Anthony, our engineering teacher, will be traveling with him and it will be the week right after school gets out. So even though he'll be graduating, he'll still be participating in a high school event, which is great. Construction trades. This year on top of building a tiny house, 
they have also built a storage shed for Green Street School and the students led by Robert Simeon have focused on using prefabricated construction panel types of building process <coughs> to build a shed within the shop so it's complete and then they tear it down and bring it to the site and uh, assemble it on site so it's a neat learning process for the kids to be involved with. Uh, our English teacher, Jen Connor, has been selected by our school improvement organization that, that we were been, we've been involved with for the past two years, uh, Southern Regional Education Board and Technology Centers at Work, to present at their summer conference, which is in Atlanta, Georgia this year, and she's been chosen of to present her literacy integration with math this year, which was outstanding according to uh, our SREB representative to be able to incorporate an academic subject such as math into her literacy teaching platform. So we're very excited for Jen to be a participant in this. Uh, our automotive program will be attending the Ford AAA competition, which is New England based, which will be in Epping, New Hampshire this Friday and Saturday. And two students, Tristan Hodge and Chris Stone, will be attending this competition as two students did as well last year. I think they placed 10th or 11th last year. So Jim Valliere, their auto instructor, is hoping to that they'll place within the top three. And good luck to those students. And that is all. Are we uh, starting to figure out who we're going to have sitting in the <coughs> for students next year in terms of sending schools and so forth? Mm -hmm. Where does that schedule this kind of fall into place, the commitments? We'll know more in the next week or two yeah. with our Sunday school. But yeah, they're still getting a trickling in yeah. from Hinsdale and Twin Valley. Yeah. So. Well, maybe. Can we get together on the 18th if we can mm -hmm. give a little bit of an update as to yep. how that's looking? Mm -hmm. Sure. Any questions for Michael? If not, we'll move to BUHS. Okay. So, um, first I'd like to share copies of the spring sports schedule with the board. Um, I have to apologize up front. It does say it's the 15-16 spring sports schedule. That is not next year's. It's a misprint. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, or maybe it is next year's and nobody told me. Um, but so far, we seem to have all the same dates as we did this year. So, um, <laughs> so let's go with this one as our spring sports schedule. Uh, our teams, as, as you've probably heard, are um, competing, doing well in some sports. And uh, you know, the Fed Relays were Friday night, and um, that was a great event here. And it was wonderful to see so many teams here you know, enjoying our facilities, enjoying our track. I, and even enjoying um, the other facilities next to the track. So it was great to see. Um, <coughs> in music news, we'll have 16 musicians participate in the Allstate Festival this week in Newbury. And uh, last week we had our all district course night that included 200 students um, from bands Oak Grove, Dunnerson, Putney, and Guilford. And during that time, our BUHS students served as mentors and clinicians. Um, for the younger students, and that was kind of a neat thing to, to walk around and see, to see um, <clears throat> our students serving in that capacity. Um, last week, we also had a group here called Race Peace, and it's a group that travels the country. They're based in Louisiana, and they travel the country, and they do, uh, I guess the best word for it is performance art with high school students. And they worked with 12 of our students, and during the week, they did half-day residency workshops with them. And that culminated in a performance that featured um, some video vignettes, some poetry, some dance, um, and a really great rap battle and a, a beatbox battle, which I would show, but that's not my microphone. Um, you know, where they, you know, and um, so that was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, they did that for our Diversity Day culmination on Friday. 
and they also did a performance on Saturday here at the auditorium. Um, it was a really incredible experience for our kids, and many of them came up to me and said, you know, I, I never would have worked with these other students, so I'm so glad you organized this. And so um, a lot of students from our AWARE program, students from our acting program uh, were involved, so we enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, Saturday night, you might have noticed there was a couple of limos in town, um, and it might have been Justin Bieber, but I'm pretty sure it was our junior prom, and uh, it went off without a hitch. Uh, I have to give kudos to Peter Canazero and his group of sophomores. They did an incredible job of uh, creating a, a great space in the River Garden, and uh, you know, went off without a hitch, and everybody left um, sweaty but happy. Um, we, you know, you could stand outside and just feel the heat radiating out the front door and the back door of the River Garden, but uh, kids had a really good time, and, and it was great to see. Uh, in testing news, we're starting and, and completing some testing. Uh, we have completed our SBAC exams. Uh, a steep learning curve for us uh, as part of that process. Um, you know, we think we're going to streamline the process to do fewer sessions and um, to see if we can kind of move the process along. There's a lot of student fatigue by the end. Um, you know, being scheduled for eight or nine sessions was just tough. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, a lot of lessons that we'll incorporate next year. Um, AP exams begin this week, and that's national. Those, are, those dates are set by the nice folks at Advanced Placement College Board. Those exams will go on for the next couple of weeks. We start our own exams tomorrow with our AP calculus exam, and uh, from there we'll go on to the other ones. Uh, next Monday and Monday the 18th, we'll be doing science kneecaps as well for our juniors. Once again, those, the poor 11th graders will have some, some state testing to, to get through. And, um, you know, we're pretty confident we'll do okay on that. But again, you know, it's been a long, hard spring for the junior class, and you know, I have to applaud the juniors for their uh, patience with us and with the whole testing process. It just feels like there's an awful lot of testing for them right now. Um, we sent a lot of students abroad, and you know, I'm glad to report they all came back. Our Swiss Exchange, they were gone from the 11th to the 24th. Uh, Maggie Cassidy, this is her last Swiss Exchange trip before she retires in June. Um, they had a great program. They spent two days in Paris and then they did home stays in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, Germany also traveled, they, our German Exchange also traveled the 11th to the 25th. Uh, they went to um, the Leipzig Zoo. They went to the BMW plant in Leipzig as well. They did not bring me back a car. Uh, they home stayed with German families. They traveled to Dresden, Wittenberg, and Berlin. And uh, we will welcome 10 students from Leipzig in October um, as they kind of reciprocate the exchange program. And uh, that has been a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, also, we had four students travel with Michaela Sims and Megan Shearer in the Social Studies Department. They went to India and they were housed at the Papa Brahma School and spent uh, 10 days in India. And they are also back, tired. Um, they've seen a lot of great things. and. Um, so we're, we're pleased that you know we have such a great opportunity to let our students experience different cultures um, directly. It's one of the things that is really special about BUHS. Um, turning to other news, uh, we'll be doing social studies interviews on the 11th and the 13th uh, to replace Megan Shearer, who I believe Chris Day brought her resignation last time. And so we're, we'll be looking for uh, board members to participate in that process. Um, it looks like it will be a full day on the 11th and a partial day on the 13th. So if anybody's interested, let me know that. Um, I know there might be somebody. Um, looking at the end of the year, uh, on June 14th, which is a Sunday, we have baccalaureate. Um, that will be in, in our courtyard. Um, June 17th at 7 o'clock, we'll have senior awards. That's a Thursday. And of course, on June 18th, because the weather will be just like today, um, we'll have graduation on Natowich Field. So, what? Eighteenth. That's Friday. The eighteenth. No, the nineteenth. The nineteenth. Thank you. And the eighteenth would be then. The that would be the event. award. So back everything up a day. Thank you. He was looking at the fifteenth, sixteenth. I was yes. I was looking at the sports <laughs> calendar. <laughs> Playing way ahead. Yeah. So my well, that's next year. Go that far. <laughs> so and I can't call the weather for next year. Just this year. Uh, I've already had student, uh, seniors asking me, "Is it going to rain?" <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Um, of course not. 
That's up to the superintendent. That, right, that's, that's, that's Dr. Staley's job. Um, I have a, a resignation to share with the board as well. Uh, Natasha Jones, who is a math teacher, has tendered her resignation. Um, she is leaving to, uh, to head back north uh, to Plattsburgh, New York, where she's from. Uh, she has a, a new family, she has a young child, and uh, you know, is going <clears> to <throat> move back to, um, to northern New York, where she's from. Um, she does thank uh, WSCSU for their support. Um, one of the things that she really was uh, adamant about when she and I talked about it is she really respects and is appreciative of the board and BUHS's commitment to the value of a family. During her pregnancy and during her leave, uh, we worked really hard to make sure her teaching load when she came back was, was not overwhelming right away. Um, we will miss Tasha. She has been incredible. She is, you may remember, a few years ago, she and another teacher, Michelle Page, uh, did the problem of the day binders for all of our courses. Um, she's been a big part of the Common Core initiative in the math department. Um, so losing her is quite a blow. She's also a co-teacher with the special education department. So I would ask the board to uh, accept her resignation. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the resignation of Natasha Jones with regret. Second. Second. Give it a shot. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extension, seeing none, is unanimous. I have a question for Steve, if I could, or maybe it's for whoever. Um, I did receive an email last year after graduation of a Guilford resident who was exceedingly disappointed that there wasn't more graduation material in the reformer. Uh, they used to have, when my daughter was there, they had, yeah. you know, front page articles. And the pictures. You know, the pictures. They had uh, mm -hmm. all the different information about awards. And, and uh, it was a big deal. Um, yeah. And now it's like, poof. So, um, Don't blame the school. No, I'm not. But I'm not blaming the school at all. But if, if somehow the reformer could realize that it is a very important time for a lot of families uh, in this district, so I, I think it would be really nice to have more of a call them. Yeah. I will call them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, you know, BCTV is doing a phenomenal job now with graduation. They covered really well. Um, oh, BCTV. Yeah, yeah that's good. It's, it's covered really well. And, you know, Simon Cast, um, which is yeah. nice to see. So. But I can, you know, I can also call the reformer and see what they plan for coverage. You know, I'll try to call them. Yeah. That would be probably a good idea because they do, uh, you know, when they get public public input, they're much more likely to at least consider expanding the coverage. <laughs> um, we've also been busy doing some hiring in the math department. And, um, you know, we, we've interviewed for the position that, that David Sear has vacated and was also interviewed for the position that Mary Beth Campbell has vacated. And um, for those positions, we had a total of 18 applicants. We interviewed six of them. Uh, the committee was Chris Day, Carolyn Durant, uh, Rick Lane, Kevin O'Donnell, and Ruth Barton. And um, I would ask the board at this time to uh, <coughs> uh, hire Ms. Tara Cloutier. Uh, Tara will earn her Bachelor of Arts degree from Keene State in May, and um, she interviewed very well, and when she taught her sample lesson, her sample lesson was extremely well planned, and um, <coughs> she did a fine job, so I would recommend that we uh, appoint Ms. Cloutier in that department. How do you spell the last name? C-L-O-U-T-I-E-R. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion? I move that we hire Ms. Tara Cloutier for math position. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or extension? <coughs> Seeing none, it's unanimous. Yeah. Um, I would also, uh, in that same committee, we also are recommending um, that Ms. Erin Hillow, Hillow, H I L O W, also be appointed to the math department. Um, Aaron is also a Keene State student, and, and I have to say, Keene State uh, had some phenomenal 
candidates this year, and we're really pleased with, with um, their product. I've kind of talked to the people at Kansas State. I was amazed. And let them know that they have got some great young teachers that they're producing right now. Erin um, actually did her student teaching here at UHS with Kevin O'Donnell as well. Erin, um, like, like Tara, uh, did a great sample lesson, and I, I strongly endorse her candidacy. So I would ask the board to appoint Ms. Erin Hillow. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that we hire Ms. Erin Hillow for that position. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Seeing none. Have two new math teacher points. Thank you. And I think that's quite enough for me. It, they, they, these two young ladies truly were outstanding. That's pretty amazing. They're just completing their undergraduate. Yep. They, they were truly amazing. And as you recall, we just hired Gabriella Raccio, who was also at Keene State, mm -hmm. and yeah. she did her internship here at the high school. So, for English at middle school. Yeah. So, am I up? Steve, you, Mr. Perrin, you have all my time. So, I'm any, sorry. Well, we'll just, <laughs> any more questions? <laughs> next, Mr. Perrin. Okay. We'll buy the band. <laughs> Um, Take all the time you need. So. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like like Steve had mentioned, the uh, SBAC testing, uh, we have just begun. They finished. We decided to go a little later in the window so we could try to work out the, the tech kinks as best we could. Uh, still some issues, but what we found, which you might be curious about, is we were able to test all, we've been able to test all 300 students at once. Um, in the middle school and have it work. So our bandwidth, kudos to Bob Whitberg and his department um, for making sure they got more routers ready and the, the Wi-Fi signal. They also programmed all the Chromebooks, so the students have taken all the tests on Chromebooks. Um, we, we download the secure browser onto them, they log into that browser. We did two practice sessions last week, an hour for language arts, an hour for math, and the, the primary focus of that was just getting the teachers and the students <coughs> able to log in together and get them all approved. It's quite a, quite a process to, it isn't that difficult, but having to go through it and figure out all the little kinks, and there were plenty of them, we, we uh, eventually figured it out. When you have a ton of people proctoring the tests, and they all have to be trained and certified in it. And there were little kinks that came up this morning. We <clears throat> actually officially started, began the testing, and um, for the most part, it went well. Um, some great things about the test, uh, as far as like the old kneecaps, you, you had to start and test, do the whole test session and be done with it that day. You had a certain amount of time, and the SBAC is totally different. Students can go at their own pace, and. Um, so the teachers have really worked hard, done a great job. The, the kids, um, really very few issues with, uh, with the kids, no discipline issues. They all tried hard. We gave them some breaks. They went out and played, had a little break and got a rest. And then we'll do that tomorrow. I got to play on the fields a little bit. And um, so I'm really happy with it so far. Um, shifting gears. Uh, <clears throat> Just a couple other, uh, well, uh, diversity day was Friday for us, and uh, we had <coughs> a variety of things going on that day. We had a woman named Judy Dow come in who's um, Abnaki um, descent from northern Vermont. She presented to the students about uh, eugenics and uh, its, its impact on her life, and some history there, photos from Burlington area, and it was, it was pretty informational. She donated a bunch of books to the school, and uh, that was a good way to kick things off. We did a, uh, there's this national walk at lunch day, and so the entire student body went out on the track at lunch with all the staff, 300 students and all the staff, and they walked for lunch, and that was, uh, it was a beautiful day for that, so they had a good time. Um, and then the end of the day, Probably, for me, the most powerful experience was uh, we set up what we call vacation spots. So we pulled the staff to find out, have you been anywhere interesting in the world, whether it's Italy or France or the Himalayas? 
And we found out that quite a few teachers had traveled and gone to diverse locations. And so we set up these rotations. The students could choose three places to visit and they rotated. And Miss Curry did an amazing job coordinating that whole rotation piece. So you can imagine trying to move 300 students around and have them sign up. They signed up through Google Drive and then they, and then she put it all into a, an amazing kind of, she worked, one night she worked till like 12.30 at night in the morning working on getting the schedule ready for it. And um, the presentations were phenomenal. We had, the one I went into and I stayed for quite a while, there was a student who spent three years in Chile and she presented to her classmates on her experience down there and she captivated those kids the entire time. I was so impressed for an eighth grader. Um, and there was, you know, somebody presented on the Himalayas and we had rope climbing in Mexico and some amazing, uh, it was really powerful. Um, so I'm really happy with the way that went. Um, <clears throat> a couple other uh, things that are going on. This week's National Teachers Week and Wednesday's National Teachers Day. So we get a chance to kind of thank a teacher. Um, we're going to try and find a way to honor them. Uh, elementary schools are visiting in the next week or so. So Green Street, Academy, <laughs> Guilford, Vernon, they're all coming here to BAMS to spend a couple hours. The sixth graders, incoming seventh grade, visiting, seeing, getting tours. The uh, counselors do all that. Um, so I have a uh, few resignations. Uh, a couple of them are non-certified staff, so it's kind of a, just an FYI. Uh, they're both very valued employees, so... Uh, um, the first one's Cody Rogers, who's a para, a professional who's uh, been a coach and been here a few years. I don't know how, exactly how many. Cody's a young, young guy, been active with the school. And he has an opportunity to go to uh, Texas with his girlfriend and enroll in a program where he can go to college and, and work um, at the same time and get his degree. And he'd like, he'd like to come back as a certified teacher. Um, he actually, it's effective May 22nd. They take off at the end of May. Um, so that's uh, that's a loss for us. He's a he's a good active member of our um, school, um, and we have uh, Amity DeAngelis, our beams director, um, is uh, at, tendered her resignation um, for personal reasons, um, and uh, she's enjoyed her time here. She's done a, a very good job of keeping the program uh, going strong, and it's. it's it's a big loss for us in having to hire that position again. Um, so those are the two FYIs. We have one certified teacher, which is also a huge loss for us, uh, Sue Boss, uh, who had been at Guilford, uh, recently tendered her resignation. Um, and uh, she's very disappointed to leave BAMS. She loves it here. Um, she... Um, She, she got another position in Bellas Falls and it really has to do with licensing um, in, the, in the state. Um, so it has nothing to do with our school. She really wanted to stay, but um, the licensing to get middle level endorsements are pretty, pretty, um, pretty challenging. And um, uh, so I would ask that you um, accept the resignation of Sue Boss, our middle school math teacher. I move that we accept the resignation of Sue Boz as middle school math teacher with, with regret. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Not. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstention? Seeing none, it's unanimous. And we'll, um, Russ, Russ is going to be part of the interview committee to start interviewing math. We have two math vacancies uh, beginning uh, May 8th. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. So I got some employment work to do in the next few yep. weeks. Okay. Let's see. Let's do the council, VOHS, WRCC. I guess we've had everybody report except uh, no one here from the central office. Uh, and um, I 
and only one thing that I wanted to make sure we touch base on, and we might as well, we can do that right now, and that is the kind of the end of the year scheduling. Um, we will have our next regular meeting as usual on the third Monday, which would be May 18th. And then uh, as we look into June, we typically have held only one board meeting in June. Um, there's a lot going on. The, the board is will hopefully be involved in the various graduation week events. There's a tremendous amount of administrative work that has to happen. Um, and it's probably um, not that critical unless some huge topic comes up that we have a, a second board meeting because indeed it would fall on during graduation week. So uh, my suggestion would be that we follow tradition, if you will, and we have our board meeting on the first, uh, which first first Monday is happens to be the first this time around. So it would mean that our next uh, our next meeting would typically be first first of July, which uh, is the Monday after the July fourth week. But that's pushing ahead a little bit too far, but. Uh, um, does anybody in administration see a reason why we would need to have that second meeting in June? If not, uh, uh, as, uh, as you know, everybody knows we have various events on that week uh, and we hope that the board members will be able to, uh, probably I understand it's hard to get to all of them, but uh, um, be able to attend uh, we have BAMS move up, we have uh, Career Center, we have Graduation, we have Baccalaureate, we have Senior Awards Night, and we have Undergraduate Awards Night too, right? Uh, right. Under undergraduate Awards are going to be Wednesday, because exams are on Monday and Tuesday, which has never happened before. Um, undergraduate Awards are going to be Monday, June 10th, during Block 1. I'm oh, sorry, Wednesday, June 10th, Okay. during Block 1. So that's during the day. Though. It is. But there are many events, and we hope board members will be involved. Could we maybe get like one email listing out what all the events are with the where and when? Yep. That's a reasonable request. Okay, so we will plan on uh, our remaining two meetings of the year. Uh, the 18th of May and the 1st of June, and one of the agenda items on the 1st of June will be to, uh, like golf has summer rules, uh, the UHS board has summer rules where the uh, finance committee is uh, appointed to make uh, uh, decisions uh, appropriately and during the summer, and TCC is approved for hiring, and BAMS is also approved for hiring it, and that's in the uh, interest of keeping things moving in the summer when people are on vacation and so forth. Do we consider that starting after June 1st then? Yeah, generally, yeah, yeah. I think we have to vote on that. Yeah, yeah, we will. Well, it'll, be, it'll be officially on the, um, uh, under new business on the, on the first, first yeah. or our last regular meeting before summer. Yes, we do. Okay, but we don't want to start giving them too much leeway right yet. You know, keep, <laughs> keep control for May. Okay, so let's see. I think that takes care of uh, administrative reports, and we move on to unfinished business. And we have one item, policy review F30. Um, so that... Yeah becomes an additional reading and yeah basically due to a communication issue that just got one for additional reading rather than adoption so we're just going to have to push it off till next week no. okay so that would be on the 8, 18th we would uh, have that for adoption is that correct correct yeah okay all right uh, is there anything else under unfinished business um, so if not, we move on to new business, and actually item A is, is somewhat unfinished business. Uh, following up on our discussion last meeting of the photovoltaic net metering agreement, um, there, were, there were some questions which uh, 
I believe we got some pretty thorough answers, or I know we did from uh, CES, and uh, uh, we we voted four to three to table um, the vote until this this meeting. Um, and in the meantime, information has been provided. Has everybody had a chance to look over that that information? Um, Basically, the key issue was the impact overall on, on taxpayers, and uh, um, based on the way this program is set up in Vermont, uh, most um, vendors, including particularly our vendor, GMP, actually have realized savings as a result of it, so it's not additional for taxpayers. Uh, any, anybody want to make any Comments or after looking at that information, or I'm wondering if anybody has talked to anybody on the Brattleboro Town School Board. They did this on their own without an intermediary. Mm -hmm. And I, I, were you on that board no, at that but time, Russ? But we talked about some of that at the, the finance committee and. Um, the savings that they'll achieve will be probably, and Mr. Frank over here to confirm, is something on the order of half of what the savings is forecasted for um, this consortium, in, in large part because it's um, this consortium would be so big and we have more bargaining power. Uh, so uh, I think the process is we'd be putting this thing out for bid and then each school, oh, Frank is here. <coughs> I, I see the light. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, just got out of Guilford. There was a question about the, um, the, the, the photo book. Well, yeah. Just started the back in for the net metering discussion. And, uh, okay. Um, the question that we talked about the, the, way, the, the answer to the questions that we got. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruth asked about did, did we work with the town school board uh, who did pretty much their own program and Russ's response was that the savings uh, for this program should be higher than they were. That's the that expectation. Program. Yeah, that was a 10% discount and, um, and we're hoping for at least 20% uh, but that's what the bid process will, will reveal. Um, and then each board would would negotiate with the winning bidder. That's right. And so nobody would sign on the dotted line until we, each board negotiated specifically. CES will present the results of the bid, so you'll have multiple uh, responses, we assume, and um, they'll make a recommendation, but it will be up to each individual board to decide if they want to accept that or reject it. Okay. If I remember right, the only restriction is that once we sign on to this, is that we think that those bids and then pull out and negotiate with those same people again. So we can't for, for two, two years. years. You know, yeah. So that yeah. that's that's the only thing I think that's really, really at all binding by taking the step that would be at this phase. Yeah. Well, and that seemed to be a reasonable security for them to know that they aren't going to be doing all the legwork and. Right, that makes sense. Jump ship, yeah. And I, I would be reluctant to um, to advise the board on on negotiating with a, uh, a solar photovoltaic developer without a professional like CES, um, just because it is it is new to us. It's a complex area. It, there's a provision of law that needs to be interpreted. Um, so I I would rather have a professional that that's what they do um, advising us moving ahead um, so that's that's why I've suggested that you consider working with this this uh, structure I can make a motion I did last time so do we have a motion since the other one since we had one on the table that was oh, sure. yeah. move to take to take the Motion, the previous motion off the table. Second. Okay. 
which would have been the original, your original motion. Yes. Your second motion being the one to table. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. All right. So now the motion, the original motion is back on the table. And do we have that? Right. Oh, we, yeah. Here's the motion right it here. It says, Mr. Murphy made the motion to approve joining the consortium to pursue PV net metering project by way of competitive services. Okay. Seconded by Ms. Barton. Here we have an official oh, okay. official motion that probably we should actually do. Thank you for that. But uh, this uh -oh. has been provided by the <coughs> office. Do so you want to read it? Want me to read okay. it? Yeah. Okay. However. Can I have it to copy? Yes. I'll oh, pass <laughs> it to you as soon as I'm done reading. Okay. Um, so I make a motion to authorize Brattleboro Union High School District Number Six to participate in a solar photovoltaic net metering project RFP managed by Competitive Energy Services as outlined in the Energy Procurement Consulting Agreement. Second. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? Yeah. So that was yeah. a friendly amendment to, to your motion. Oh, so all right. Are you accepting? Sure. And the yes. second they're going to accept yes. the friendly amendment. Yeah. So you know something. Yeah. Um, well, I um, obviously feel much better about the financials having seen this data that they sent. It would be great if they had this with them when they first presented because that answered the question that obviously was very valuable because some utilities, it did hurt the taxpayer. Um, but my question is, they had presented three ways to take advantage of um, net metering. Uh, this one, the signing in with this consortium and you know having it all off site. But there was also two options for on site solar panels. Is there a reason why we rejected those? Was there a discussion of on site solar panels? Yes, there was, and you could perhaps comment. But one of the things is that uh, uh, we're really not in the in the business of, of owning hardware, so to speak. Um, not that we couldn't conceivably be. Uh, one would think that perhaps with these acres and acres of roof, uh, it would be a, it would, you know, be a great thing to put all that stuff up there. But it, Steve, Steve over there, his eyeballs are rolling. I, and I, you know, I have to admit that way back, I, I was wondering about that too, but I've been convinced and uh, and, and Robert certainly followed up with me on that one. That uh, it really isn't. It's not something we want to start doing to deal with the integrity of these roofs by putting solar on top of them. Um, and in terms of locating somewhere else on the property, I just don't see a place that. Uh, and I think that was the two of the key reasons. And you, I mean, you guys can add more. I mean, if we had that much flat space, we'd use it for. For practice fields, <laughs> to be honest, yeah, because yeah, we're already stretched for practice practice fields. And so, um, yeah. And the third one was off. What was the third option? Off site, but which is what we're doing. The, no, 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 that's the off site, but in the academy, you can right? Do it on your own. Yeah. The, the other the other two options were own our own or have a power company put some on our yeah. property. So, but uh, if if the roof won't take it and we don't have any other space, then that answers why we, <laughs> why we rejected those. That just wasn't yeah. made clear at all in the presentation. But putting it in the cellar just, it just doesn't really yeah. work well. <laughs> and the Woodworth lot yeah. isn't big enough. <laughs> okay. Any other uh, thoughts or comments? If not, are we ready to vote on the motion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed or abstentions? Seeing none, it is approved. Okay. And we can forge ahead. Forge ahead and keep it posted. Okay, then there is uh, another item. Uh, Wells Fargo Corporation Account Resolution Action Needed. Um, Wells Fargo, uh, just as a refresher, is uh, helps us with the Eames scholarship. They manage about 50% of the Eames endowment, and um, Philip George 
manages the other 50%. And uh, um, this is kind of a housekeeping chore, and it basically allows Frank um, to uh, take action on behalf of the school um, as regards to this account, because that was set up with Jim Payne. Right. Them, and it's, it's basically to authorize me to do what Jim did on behalf of the board. Right. Uh, so essentially it's authorizing Frank to do what we're paying him to do. So, um, but it's housekeeping that has to be taken care of. So um, is there a specific um, Just wording that we need? To, not right there. Motion to approve. Okay. All right. Um, what is I since I oh, you're I'm sure somebody else yeah. should read it. Um, I move to approve the Wells Fargo Corporation <coughs> account resolution authorizing Frank Rucker to act on behalf of the Brattleboro Union High School District Number Six. Second. 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 Okay. Any further questions? If not, all in favor? None. Um, opposed? Or abstentions? Seeing none. You're, you're in on this one too. Okay. <laughs> thank you. I see the weight on your shoulders. Yeah, no, <laughs> thank you for uh, yeah, yeah. We will, there'll be a couple of uh, need a couple of signatures on that board chair and one other, so we'll get the signatures. There's a lot of little arrows and yeah. signs and everything. Sure. Yeah. Help, help interpret yeah. them. Yeah. Very thorough. Direct traffic. <laughs> yes, right. Okay. Uh, we I had a note about meeting schedule. We already talked about that. Um, is there anything else that needs to be discussed under new business? Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Second. Second. Mr. Collier, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Seeing none, we stand in adjournment and we thank you all.